Hello, this is the Mushroom Wizard, and I'm returning today with yet another presentation regarding the mushrooms of Saskatchewan and the ways in which we go about picking and identifying those mushrooms. So today we are going to be looking at, once again, the brittle gills of Saskatchewan. This is the second presentation regarding this large group of mushrooms that are commonly picked in this province. Um, so. If you recall the first presentation that I did regarding brittle gills, uh, focused in on brittle gills that had a taste that was mild. Um, today we're going to be looking at brittle gills that have a spicy or peppery component to their taste. And yeah, so this is the spicy brittle gills of Saskatchewan. Let's get started. The only genus that we will be looking at is Rosella or Rusala or however that is pronounced. I've never heard anybody say it, just read it. That's how that goes. So what is a spicy brittle gill? Well, uh, we went through everything that's kind of made up what a brittle gill or Rosella was last time. Um, but just to, to clarify a few of those, they belong to the Rosella genus. Uh, they break apart easily. Remember we talked about that. They have very brittle gills, though some of the mushrooms we'll be looking at today actually do not. They kind of break that rule. Um, they have a peppery or spicy taste, and they have no dangerously toxic species in Saskatchewan. Once again, I'd like to clarify that doesn't mean that there are no toxic species, because there actually are... Um, numerous species that are mildly toxic and spicy found in the province but there are no dangerously toxic ones the only really dangerous rosella that i know of occurs in asia and perhaps in the southeastern united states uh, and we don't live in either place now in terms of the spicy or peppery taste when people uh, get a bit more advanced in mushroom picking and they have learnt how to identify the genus Rosella. Um, it just kind of opens up a whole world of new possibilities to you because uh, if you take a look online and in books, you're going to find that getting right down a species is actually really hard to do. You find a green brittle gill, for instance. We looked at several green ones last time. And you're not sure which one it is. All you really have to do is taste it, and if it is mild in taste, well, there's no dangerous species, right? You just have to cook it, and you should be fine. Uh, if it is spicy in taste, however, uh, you have some toxic potentials, especially if the color of that brittle gill is red. Now, there are some species that are spicy and edible, so it gets a little bit more complicated when you get into those particular ones which we're going to look at today because it's now a bit more important that we get down as close as we can to species and groups of species in order to make sure we're not eating something like an emetic rosella or the sickener. So let's start looking at some species here. So the first one, this is very common in, in Saskatchewan, this is the copper brittle gill, rosella de colorans. So this cap is very variable in terms of its coloration. So uh, generally speaking, it'll be copper or orange, but it can also be shades of brown, red, purple, or yellow. Often throughout its lifespan, it will change in color drastically. Uh, if you remember from the last presentation, it, it, it has that classic brittle gill shape as well that we've already seen numerous times where it's spherical. And when spherical, I mean it's like a globe on top of a stipe where the margins curl under and actually touch the stipe and protect the gills when they're young. Uh, that becomes convex. So that convex is the classic rounded mushroom shape. And then it becomes flat and then shallowly depressed with age and maybe the margins upturned slightly. Uh, the cuticle, once again, this is common with many Rosella species, the cuticle is very thin, almost like tissue paper. But in this species, it does not peel away easily. So in many other species, 
uh, the cuticle, you'll be able to peel that like tissue paper, often almost to the center there. But in this one, it does not peel and the cuticle is also kind of sticky. Uh, the margin is smooth and becomes striate with age. Now that's kind of a common um, feature of Rosella's, so that one will, will be the same. Now the flesh, if you were to cut, say, the cap in half, the flesh would stain gray and then black. Uh, like most Rosella's, uh, this damages easily, and it is a very big mushroom. It grows up to six inches in diameter, so that's quite big for a Rosella. So we have some identifying features right there that can lead us to believe we're looking at a copper brittle gill. Here are some uh, pictures to demonstrate that uh, variability in terms of color. And here's a size reference for you. So these are a bit smaller than the uh, six inch maximum. As I've said before, oftentimes when we say it's a maximum, um, we're really just looking at the end with some outliers there. Uh, you, can, you can usually shrink that down a bit for the majority of mushrooms that you'll find. So the gills are cream, becoming yellowish with age. They're adnate to slightly decurrent. Uh, they are close together. The short gills are absent. If you see here, there are no short gills. Uh, they are brittle, as we can expect from brittle gills. Uh, these bruise gray if you damage them. And that's, uh, again, a defining feature there. And this produces a pale yellow spore print. The stipe is white to off-white, again, bruising gray. It is cylindrical, so the same width throughout. It uh, has a central attachment to the cap. Uh, as with uh, the majority of brittle gills, it is filled with a powdery pith when young, and you, you feel it, it feels like a solid, solid stipe, but uh, it hollows out and the, the pith kind of wears away uh, at maturity. And it's up to four inches high and an inch thick. The ecology is mycorrhizal, and it's mycorrhizal with conifers. So, as you can imagine, that makes it pretty, uh, pretty much province-wide. If you're if you're up past Saskatoon, really, if you're going north, uh, these are preferential to bogs. They are solitary or scattered, and they occur summer through fall. In terms of their edibility, they are good. Uh, they're not the best brittle gill you'll find, but they're, they're you know, of the equivalency of a uh, mushroom that you would pick from, say, the, the supermarket. Uh, they do have a peppery taste a little bit. That's something I really like. Some people will not. Once again, this is something that should be stewed or pickled or uh, you can fry it, but you'd want to give it a quick boil first just to firm it up so it's not like chalky and crumbly. And then these are good for intermediate mushroom pickers. So we'll move on to the next species here. Oh, there we go. There's a, a look-alike alert. So we'll deal with that real quick. If you remember, um, I mentioned that there were some very spicy mushrooms in this uh, province. Uh, among the, the spiciest of mushrooms that you can put in your mouth are the mushrooms that go by the common name of sickener. And we have three of them here. That's Rosella emetica, Rosella cremori color, and Rosella sylvicola. In the bottom there, I don't know which one that is. Probably emetica because it looks like it's sitting in moss. Uh, and Rosella emetica is uh, associated with sphagnum moss in particular. Uh, on the left, we have Rosella decolorans. Uh, it's a bit more faded in its coloration as well. It would be bruising gray, which Rosella, these, uh, these emetic Rosellas, don't do, but uh, you'd want to look a bit more into them to determine for yourself different features for telling one from another. We're going to move on to the next species now. This is the short-stemmed brittle gill, Rosella brevipes. This is very common in Saskatchewan as well. So the cap is off-white, turning tan with age. 
Uh, it's convex, becoming flat, and then deeply depressed with age. You can see right there, it's starting to become almost a uh, vase or funnel shaped, right? Uh, there is again a paper thin cuticle, but it does not peel easily. And what happens is with age, it kind of cracks and, and the surface there becomes areolate to some extent. Uh, the margin is smooth and downwards rolled. And it often remains downwards rolled even when, when it's, it's lifting upwards. Sometimes not, but sometimes yes. Uh, it does not damage easily. So that's unique among brittle gills. Uh, it, it, it does not damage easily. You'd really have to whack it. Whereas other ones would just, picking them can almost make them break apart in your hands. These are big, big mushrooms. They grow up to about nine inches in diameter. And that's not like a rare occurrence. These, these commonly are very big. Uh, one thing that I will mention is that oftentimes they kind of open up underground as they're pushing upwards. And uh, as a result, they're completely caked in dirt and leaf litter. It's really gross. So the best time to pick these is immediately after a rain when you can just wipe all that crud away because as it dries, it actually seems to stick and fuse itself to the top of the, the mushroom surface. And it can be really, really gross, especially if you're mixing this into a basket with other mushrooms and you're basically mixing a mushroom caked in dirt in there. So bring some wet wipes. Here's the size reference for you. Someone went to great lengths to, to, to clean those tops off, you can see. So the gills are white, becoming cream with age. Uh, they're adnate to adnext. They are close to crowded. You can see how crowded those ones there are. Uh, there are short gills present. So up till now, all of the uh, brittle gills that we've looked at have had no short gills. This one actually has short gills. So that's uh, a, a difference too. That could be a bit confusing if you're trying to determine if this is a brittle gill and it's your first time looking at them. Uh, those gills bruise yellow-brown and they produce cream spores. The stipe is cream turning brown with age. It's cylindrical, has a central attachment, and it is solid, so it does not have that powdery pith. So it's almost like we're looking at a completely different mushroom, but it is in fact in the Rosella genus. Uh, these grow up to about three inches high and two inches thick. In terms of the ecology, Rosella brevipes, as we've seen with many species, is a European species, and that name is used to describe several unnamed, macroscopically similar species here. So however, however many species we have in Saskatchewan, I don't even know, but uh, we're just going to use the same name. I will mention that one mushroom that it is very easy to confuse with what we're looking at here is the peppery milk cap uh, lactari lactiflus piperatus. They look very similar and they taste very similar and they're both edible. So these are mycorrhizal with both hardwoods and conifers. They are terrestrial. They are scattered to gregarious. But when I say scattered or gregarious, since they're such large mushrooms, they're really not like together. They're almost like one here, one over there, one a few feet away. Uh, they are found summer through fall. Once again, you can see all that forest duff on there that's been kind of caught in its funnel shape. Little sticks stuck to it. Uh, in terms of their edibility, I would say poor to good. The taste is variable, probably because we're looking at several species that uh, all look the same, but they range from bland to mild to peppery to slightly bitter. Good for pickling. Very difficult to clean. So in terms of that poor to good, I would put poor with something that's bland that it takes you a half hour to clean. Good, I would put with something that's a bit peppery, um, not in the bitter sense, and you happen to get lucky and pick it clean. So again, very subjective. Uh, these are, I said, for beginner mushroom pickers, but really anything with gills, I would say, should be intermediate. Here's a lookalike alert for you. Uh, Rosella brevipes left versus Lactarius pubescens right. 
So Lactarius pubescens uh, is one of the woolly milk caps. Very, very spicy once again. It is tomentose, so it's fuzzy. That should be a defining telling feature there for you. You can look the rest up. But uh, Lactarius pubescens is mildly toxic. It's not going to put you in the hospital, but it could land you up the night with, with runs and perhaps some vomiting if you don't cook it thoroughly. Next species we're going to look at uh, is the blackening brittlegill, Rosella dissimilans. If you look online, you'll see it being called Rosella nigricans, but Rosella nigricans does not occur here. We have Rosella dissimilans instead, a similar species. So the blackening brittlegill is off-white, turning brown, then black over time. It goes through a very significant color change. Uh, it is convex, becoming flat, and then shallowly depressed with age. It is sometimes eccentric in shape. If you're looking at its profile from above down, uh, you can see that eccentric shape to the right there in that photo. And you can also see the blackening occurring uh, on the bottom. Uh, once again, uh, the cuticle is not easy to peel. And with most Rosellas, it will be. So that's one way to tell this from another. Uh, the margin is smooth at first, but then becoming wavy, often due to its eccentric shape as it, the margins begin to turn upwards. Uh, these bruise red and then black when sliced. So again, that's a very significant color change that uh, should alert you to, to this species. Uh, these do not damage as easily as other brittle gills do. If you kicked it hard enough, it probably would break, but it wouldn't shatter the moment you touch it, like many. Uh, once again, this grows up to nine inches. They're quite big, or they can be quite big. Uh, so a lot of similarities, actually, with the last mushroom that we looked at, the short stem brittle gill. So here uh, is a size reference, but this is also a reference to some of the color changing. You can see somebody scratched the top surface there, probably to get the dirt off, and you can see it's turned red and is starting to turn black in spots, and then the bottom cap there is black already. Again there, if you look at that stipe, somebody has clearly scratched some lines into the stipe there to show it's staining red. Uh, so the gills are white, becoming cream with age. They, once again, they bruise black, or sorry, bruise red and then black. They are adnate to slightly to current. And sub-distance, that's a huge difference. Everything that we've looked at so far has been close to crowded. And that there, you can see the gills are actually fairly well spaced, so close to sub-distant, I would say. Not distant yet, but getting there. And then short gills are frequent. You can see uh, at least three or four lengths of short gills there. Two or more between each gill. And these produce white spores. So that's a, that's a difference from many other brittle gills as well. You can see as well, it's cut in half there. And what you see in the middle is that powdery pith that we've been talking about starting to break away. Um, so that is something that you see in this one that you don't see in the short stem brittle gill that we just talked about. This one does have that powdery pith. Uh, the stipe itself is cream, turning red, then black with age. It is cylindrical, uh, central attachment to the cap. You could see the slicing there, that bruising red, it will soon bruise turn black after that and uh, it's pretty big it's up to five inches high and two inches thick this is a big mushroom and there you can see it is turned black and that's what happens uh, at maturity and beyond for this the species or if you've bruised it or handled it too much these are mycorrhizal with hardwoods and conifers they are terrestrial scattered to gregarious and these are found summer through fall this is a good mushroom good for soups i have heard people saying that they will uh, dehydrate this mushroom and then turn it into a powder and use it as a soup base because it's got that kind of spicy uh, it's like a mushroom and spice combined it's a very peppery mushroom so um, some people really like that this is for intermediate mushroom pickers. I have found this one up at Emma Lake.
and uh, that's where I look for it. So on the left here, because this is a lookalike alert to, to pay attention to, we have our solid dissimulins. On the right, we have our solid density flora. Our solid density flora is unpalatable. It does not taste good and it is mildly toxic. So something to avoid, it's called a dense, uh, dense brittle gill. So uh, look that one up. I don't think I've done anything about that in the, the future presentations because again, it's mild, but mo it's mostly an issue of being unpalatable than anything else. So we're looking at now the purple brittle gill, Ursula atropurpurea. A very pretty mushroom. So the cap is reddish purple to dark purple to deep red. So a lot of variability. Sometimes there's a blackish red center um, and then it becomes white towards the margin, sometimes with with kind of yellow modeling. And you can see some of that occurring in there. And when I say white towards the margin, oftentimes that's when there's been rain or other water to wash it out. This mushroom can get very, very white, which is strange for a purple mushroom. And we'll see that momentarily. Uh, once again, it has that spherical, classic Rosella shape to it, then convex and flat, and then finally what it's doing here with a central depression. It has a paper thin cuticle that peels halfway to the center. So this is the first mushroom in this presentation that we've seen that does that. Uh, the margin is smooth, once again, becoming striate. And as you can see here, with all the chips on the cuticle and stuff, this mushroom damages easily. And it's pretty big. It grows up to five inches in diameter. There is some variability for you. And a size reference as well. The gills are white, becoming cream with age. They're adnate slightly to current. They are close together. There are no short gills. Uh, they're brittle and they produce a white spore print. So this is very much the classic gill formation that we find in brittle gills. Uh, the stipe is white to off-white, bruising grayish brown, cylindrical. It has a central attachment to the cap it has that powdery pith that we're used to with the species. And then it grows up to four inches high and one inch thick. So again, this is a species that comes from Europe. This is not what we actually have here, but what we have here are numerous, perhaps numerous, at least several species that look macroscopically similar or the same. As a result, since we're talking about several species, we should expect this to have several mycorrhizal associations and what we see with this is oak and pine terrestrial it is scattered to gregarious found spring through fall if you look at the right there you can see how washed out those caps are and how white the margins have become as well and then in terms of its edibility their choice um, I think often people mistake this one too for Rosella rosea, which I doubt actually occurs here. Uh, these are mildly spicy, not, not overtly so. Good in stews. There is a high allergen potential. Some people can, be, can react to these and they're for intermediate mushroom pickers. There's that lookalike alert again. There's the sickener on the right, much more red. Uh, very white, but sometimes Rosella atropurpurea can be very red as well. We'll continue along here. And this should be the last species that we see in this presentation. This is the ochre brittle gill, Rosella ochreluca. If you remember, we've already seen two other yellow species that were mild. So here's a hint as to how you can tell these apart. This one just take a little taste. If it's got a bit of a spicy bent to the flavor, then this is what you have. Uh, so the cap is pale yellow, darkening with age. It has the same spherical shape that we've seen already. Uh, paper thin cuticle peels two thirds to the center. So almost all the way there. And then the, smar the margin is smooth becoming striate. Sometimes it's wavy. You can see it being a bit wavy here. 
and the way it's bending. But more importantly, you can see very well what I mean by striate. If you look around the circumference of the outer edge there, you can see how the cuticle is almost, it's almost like it's tightened over top of the top of the gills. And you can see the gills through. That is striate. So that's something that you see in most Rosellas. This grows up to about four inches in diameter. There's a size reference for you. The gills are white, turning cream with age. They are adnate to add next. They are close together. There are no short gills. They are brittle. And this produces a cream spore print. And that stipe is off-white, turning gray with age. It is cylindrical to slightly clavate. So that's a bit different. You could see it's clavate there, actually. It's more club-shaped with a bit more width towards the base. This is filled with the same powdery pith that most Rosellas are. This grows up to about four inches high and one inch thick. In terms of its ecology, it is mycorrhizal with conifers and hardwoods, but has a preference for pine. So jack pine is where you'd look for it here. It is terrestrial, scattered to gregarious, found summer through fall, and just to finish this up here, the edibility is good. Peppery taste, as we can expect from a presentation on peppery tasting brittle gills. Good for pickling. I like spicy pickles. And uh, these are for intermediate mushroom pickers. So that is the presentation on the spicy brittle gills of Saskatchewan. There are probably many more here. In fact, what we've probably looked at are better described as the uh, representatives for many more species that just look the same. This is the Mushroom Wizard. I hope you enjoyed this presentation and I will see you next time with yet another presentation on the mushrooms of Saskatchewan. Thank you.